Rojo has time. Looks for Deutsch. Deutsch at the one into the end zone. Eighth on to serve. Dug out by Bishop. This to the middle and slamming one home for. They have free ball to the crossover. Eilerson will get the pass for Holly. Set up left side. Rusted down with the kill. He'll play action. Now look to pass over the middle. It's intercepted by Cole Hebel. Intercepted by Hebel and he brings it back. Set it up, Boston on left side. Big kill blocked at the net. Kept alive by the Greyhounds. Fetting's got room, and here's Bo Fetting. Fetting's still on his feet. Fetting's gone. Bo. The Your Live Event Coaches Show is presented by the Hillsboro Economic Development Committee. Hi again, everyone. I'm Joe Lancello, and welcome to this edition of the YourLiveEvent.com Coaches Show, brought to you by the Hillsboro Economic Development Corporation. We'll be talking about the North Dakota State High School Hockey Tournament, which gets underway this week in Grand Forks. We'll talk with Tim Scarperu, the coach of Grand Forks Red River. We'll also talk about girls' high school basketball, North Dakota playoffs underway. We'll talk with Jason Wren, the coach of Thompson, who's in the Region 2 championship game. And we'll talk with people from both ends of the Region 1 girls' basketball championship game, Central Cast and Northern Cass. But first of all, we'll be starting with some high school wrestling. The state wrestling tournament in North Dakota was held last weekend at the Fargo Dome. Hillsboro Central Valley had three wrestlers make it to the medal stand. Carson Cazette was fifth at 120 pounds. Sawyer Owens was the runner up at 126. And Henry Nelson won the state title at 145 pounds. I had a chance to sit down and talk with all three of those young men recently. Welcome back to the YourLiveEvent.com Coaches Show, brought to you by the Hillsboro Economic Development Corporation. Very pleased to have three wrestlers from the Hillsboro Central Valley Burroughs wrestling team who did very well at the state tournament in Fargo last week. Uh, starting on the left, as you see it, Henry Nelson is the state champion at 145 pounds in North Dakota Class B. In the middle is Carson Cazette, who was fifth at 120 pounds, and on the right is Sawyer Owens, who was the runner-up at 126 pounds. Guys, thanks very much for coming on here. Uh, Henry, let me start with you. Uh, talk about your road uh, to the state championship. Um, so something I've been looking forward to for a long time, and I just knew I knew it was a, a goal that I could definitely achieve and been talking through just it's more just a mental thing I gotta stay in it keep my pace and control my own pace don't worry about how anything else goes were you the runner-up last year at the same way yes, class? I, yep I was the runner-up at state last year okay was the same fellow who you faced last year is he still was he still around or did he graduate um, he was still around. He was a uh, weight class above me at 152. Oh, okay. Uh, the tournament, uh, winning the first three matches and then that championship match three to two. Could you kind of talk me through that and how that went? Um, right away, I start off with just controlling the momentum, controlling the pace. Um, I think it ended up being a zero zero first period. Moving on to second, uh, I chose down, got away, and kept the put, kept the motion, kept the aggressive energy, kept looking for any way I can get to him. I got a nice shot, got my two, and then I kept the pace. Third period, he chose down, he got away. It's three, two. I'm still up by one, and I just keep in my mind, keep moving my feet, keep my hands low, keep the aggressive level, and just – maintain and keep going at them. You can't really stall out in that kind of a thing, too, because the officials will penalize you for that. Yeah, they will. And I'll usually, I'm not, wasn't really too worried about stalling, just like him somehow getting away, getting to me, I don't know, just there are so much things go through my head. I'm sure it's difficult when somebody is trying to take you down and like you're trying to avoid that. I, I have the same trouble trying to think and hit a tennis ball and have some idea of where I want to hit it. It's a same kind of a thing for you, just trying to concentrate on a couple of different things at once. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I was definitely uh, 
very like stressful and high paced, like 30 seconds at the end of the last period. What was it like when the match was over and your hand was raised? Um, I felt very accomplished and like just relieved. Just it was like a quick boost of energy and then a quick like just relief of just letting go and like of knowing I accomplished what I came here to do. Now you're the first uh, state wrestling champion from HCV since uh, 2019. Is that right? Um, I believe so. Yep. Okay. Uh, that was a gentleman named Mark Hastings, by the way. And now what year are you, Henry? I'm a senior. Okay. Do you plan to wrestle in college or at the next level? Um, I'm looking into it a little bit at Concordia, but I haven't yeah. decided. All righty. Let's move on to Carson Cazette, who was fifth at 120. Talk about uh, your matches at state. Yeah, I came off kind of dull, almost lost my first one, almost got upset, but I uh, ended up winning that just barely, but wins a win at the state tournament. These guys are seniors. They're trying to give up anything just to beat you. So I won that, then went up against the two seed, tough match, had a tough loss, but kind of expected it. Didn't wrestle too bad, wrestled much better than my first one, but went a full six minutes, so it was nice, nice for my confidence. Mm -hmm. Then blood rounds came around. I was just looking to smoke that kid and uh, wrestled pretty good. Ended up taking him. It was nice. And then just wrestled like I had nothing to lose the next matches. Upset the six. Nice. Because I beat him at regionals too. It's nice to just beat him again. Sure. And then almost, almost upset the four, I think. And, nope, the five. Nope. And, then ended up capping on off of the fifth place. No, you're a freshman, is that right? Yes. Okay. Was this your first year on varsity? Uh, no, I've been on varsity since seventh grade. Oh, wow. First okay. Time. First time placing, though. Okay. Had you been to the state meet before? Yes, both years. Oh, okay. Hillsboro Economic Development Committee provides information and a support for small businesses. Experience Hillsboro. More at 104. What is it like being at the Fargo Dome where it's where it's just so big and there's got to be so many different mats up over there? I've, I've seen it like in indoor arenas like in Minnesota and Iowa, but I'm trying to think the Fargo Dome, that's a, that's a bigger step. That's a great atmosphere. Having a lot of matches is nice because then the matches keep going rolling and there's some nice warm-up mats in the end so you can get a good warm-up in and kind of just flies by a little bit. It's crazy. It's done. Is it difficult when you really can't tell if there's somebody cheering for you specifically because it's not like a high school setting where people are pretty close? I, like, don't really – care much if people are cheering for me or not i can't hardly tell okay. especially when i'm wrestling yeah that yeah i i can understand that as well okay uh sawyer owens at 126 where were you seated in the tournament i was seated fifth coming in and i upset the number four and the number one to make it to the finals wow oh yeah i take in a situation like that you Reputation and seeing doesn't really come into play that terribly much during the match. Yeah, I mean, er anything can happen. Um, happens a lot in wrestling. Um, those seats can be thrown out, especially when the wrestler hasn't wrestled so much because he's been hurt. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it the seats can change. Talk about your match with uh, the number one seed. Did, did that go the distance to a decision? Yeah, I went to a decision um, in the first period. After the first period, it was 2-1 after I got a takedown on him and he got an escape. And then second period, I um, I think he got an escape, but um, I don't really remember much about it. And then third period, I, I was picked down and I was coming up to get an escape, but then I caught him and put him on his back and got the near fall and the reversal. 
And then I put him on his back at the end and then, yeah, kind of sealed it up at the end. And that's true because you only need to keep a guy for one second. <laughs> Down for one second, I mean. So, so tell me about the, about the championship match. Who did you face there and what did you, what did you learn from that? I wrestled Trenton Clatt. He's a great wrestler out of New Salem. Um, mm. It was good time, good to get it for my first time. I didn't wrestle great, but uh, that's all right. I I have plenty more years to wrestle. On, so, didn't New Salem win the team championship? Yeah, they did. Okay, so obviously coming from a very strong program and. About you three fellas, but there are also uh, you also had three other guys who made it to the state meet too, right? Yep, and one girl. Ah, that's right. Can't forget about Crystal Magnuson. Does she kind of spar with you guys as as well during the week? Um, not not too much unless we don't have another partner. But yeah, some sometimes she does. Is that a little uncomfortable at some times or? Maybe a little bit, but I don't know. Maybe it, it kind of depends on the person, I guess. Yeah. And you can always learn from somebody who's a little bit better. Actually, I'm familiar with a young lady in, in Iowa who, despite there, there being girls wrestling now in Iowa, she said she wanted to wrestle with the boys and she wound up eighth in her weight class this year. Mm -hmm. So with wrestling season over, will you fellows be going to like camps over the summer? Or what kind of things do you do to get ready for the next season? Yeah, I'm going to be going to some camps and some tournaments over the off season, but I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. So. Okay. Uh, well, Henry Owens and Carson Cazette and Sawyer Owens, congratulations to you fellas. Doing well at the state high school wrestling meet, and hopefully some great things will be in your future too. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll continue with the yourliveevent.com coaches show brought to you by the Hillsborough Economic Development Corporation right after this. Take a good look at Hillsboro. It's conveniently located between Fargo and Grand Forks. Hillsboro is a growing community with solid local schools with high graduation rates. There's an industrial park ready to host a new business. And there's Woodland Park with activities all year round. The Hillsboro Economic Development Corporation asks you to take a good look at Hillsboro when you're thinking about a place to put down roots and grow. For more information, contact the Hillsboro Economic Development Corporation at growhillsboroND.com. Lee Brothers Sales Highway 9 in Ada invites you to order your new Buick and Chevrolet vehicles from the Silverado, Trailblazers, Traverse, and Enclave. Lee Brothers is your authorized Chevrolet and Buick dealer providing sales and a service to the area since 1975. For ordering your vehicles, talk with Mitch, Smurf, or Jay. Trust the experts who know your vehicles best and take advantage of great Chevy certified service offers today. Lee Brothers Sales Highway 9, Ada, 218-784-2000. This is Chris from RDK Enterprises, your local precision planting dealer. We are less than 90 days until spring planting. 90 days. Are you ready? Is your maintenance plan in place? Do you have parts on hand? Are any upgrade options decided on and purchased? We can help. Spring will be here before you know it, and we will help you meet the challenge. Contact RDK Enterprises at planterdoc.com. That's planterdoc.com. Welcome back to the YearLiveEvent.com Coaches Show, brought to you by the Hillsboro Economic Development Corporation. We'll be talking girls basketball with Jason Bren, the coach of the Thompson Tommies, who are finalists in Region 2. They'll be taking on Grafton on Thursday night in Grand Forks. But just next door in Grand Forks, at the Ralph Engelstead Arena, the North Dakota State Hockey Championship gets underway on Thursday. I had a chance to talk today with Tim Scarperwood, the coach of Grand Forks Red River, the number one team in the state of North Dakota in the most recent North Dakota Boys Hockey Coaches Poll. Another weekend, another state championship decided in North Dakota, another high school championship. This time it's boys hockey. And Tim Scarperwood is the coach of Grand Forks Red River, the number one seed 
in the East region and also the number one team in the coaches poll, the most recent coaches poll. Tim, thanks very much for coming on today. Yeah, thanks, Joel. Thanks for having me. Tell me about your the uh, Red River season. Yeah, you know what? Uh, so far, it's been it's been good. You know, we we uh, uh, got off to a little bit of a slow start. Um, um, you know, second game of the year, I think we played Fargo South and they beat us, and and uh, but it was a good good uh, wake up call for us. Um, you know, I think with with our team this year, we knew that that we were going to have we have, we have quite a few uh, forwards that have returned for us, so so we knew offensively we should be okay. But I think that was a great wake up call for us right away there. Uh, allowed five goals against Fargo South and, and, you know, showed the guys that, that, uh, you know, you got to play a defensive side of the game as mm-hmm. well, not just, not just the offensive side of the game. So overall, no, I've been, been happy with, with the players and, and the play and, and uh, have had our ups and downs, but for the most part, it's been pretty, pretty good. I see you've got six of the top nine scorers in the state, and w- which is a great thing to have, but you can't count on winning seven to five games every night. Like I said, Correct. You know what? I think one of the biggest things and one of those old cliches, right? Defense wins championships. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we've talked to our guys about that and, and you can't just, uh, you can't just commit, be committed to the offensive side of the game. You got to do the right things for the full 200 feet and, and make sure you're focusing on the defensive end of the game. And, and we've gotten better at that uh, throughout the year. It's not been perfect, but, uh, uh, yeah, definitely defense wins championships and you got to focus on that end of the game as well. Who are some of the guys that have been standouts for Red River this year? Yeah, you know what, uh, Mikey Coleman uh, was the East Region Senior Athlete of the Year. He's had a great year for us. He uh, um, just been really, really uh, exciting every time he's been on the ice. He's been he's been around the puck. He's been moving his feet, and and every time he touches that puck, it seems like something exciting is going to happen. So he's had a great year for us. Uh, Carter Spruill, you know, he was our leading scorer as a sophomore and as a junior, and, and could have went and played juniors uh, this year, but decided to come back and and. Uh, I think he's played his best hockey as of late the last few weeks. He's been really good for us. Big, strong body and uses uses his body well and great shot and release and uh, has had a has has had a solid year. Uh, Dilly, Dylan Jackson, uh, I think he's got you know twenty four goals or something like that, and, and uh, he's he's had a real good year. Been around the net. I think out of his twenty four goals, I bet you twenty of them are from five feet five feet away from the net. So you talk about getting to the dirty areas, and and mm-hmm. uh, most of the goals are scored right around that paint. So he's done a good job with that. Uh, Luke Beadle, uh, again, just an offensive knack. He's got over 20 goals and, and one of those six that you talked about. Um, uh, he he uh, he's got an offensive knack that you can't that you can't teach, Joe. He he uh, that puck's on a string and and you think he's stuck in a corner. Next thing he do, do, does is a little power turn and he's out of it. And next thing a scoring chance happens. So he's he's been real good. And then and then the last two that are in the top you know top nine that you talked about are Grant Gardner and, and Carson Scarprude. Um, you know, they, they both are, are hockey IQ and make good plays and, and have had real solid years as well. How about on that defensive side of things? Yep, absolutely. You know, we got uh, offensively on the defensive side of things, Mason Ray's kind of led us there. He's He made the all-ADC team, you know, really offensively gifted. But then you also got Garrett Eichmann and Mason Stroh. They're two seniors that are returning for us, and they they play a good full 200-foot game. They, they make the good outlet passes. They can provide offense. Uh, but they're, they they also are really good defensively. And then rounding out our top four is Espen Schneider. Espen's a junior this year, and we were kind of wondering who was going to be step up and be that that number four defenseman mm-hmm. for us. And Espen's done a real nice job. He he just keeps it simple, and that that's a compliment. You know, sometimes some when you when you hear someone say keeps it simple, mm-hmm. um, you know that he headmans the puck. He's well he plays well defensively. He gets shots on net. He makes smart plays. He makes smart reads, and and he's done a nice job filling out the top four for us. Now, Red River, the number one team in the coaches' rankings, you start off with Jamestown in the quarterfinals on Thursday. Uh, have you played, faced them this season? We haven't. You know what? I, we were just talking about that, a couple of us, the other day, and I, I think it's been years since we've played Jamestown. Um, you know, I, I don't even know. This is my third year here, and, and we haven't played them in, in any of the three years that I've been here. Um, so no, I, obviously they've got some, some great history and they've, they've got some very nice players and, and, uh, you know, looking forward to a fun test tomorrow at noon. Spending a lot of time watching video, I'm guessing. What's that? I'm sorry. Are you spending a lot of time watching video? Yeah. You know what? It's, it's crazy that the, the, the uh, technology out there nowadays is so good. Uh, we, we joined a, a program called Instat this year and, and it's amazing the breakdowns that they can have. I mean, I can just, I can click on, on a, on a game and I can watch you know, power plays, penalty kills, I can pick on a player and I can just watch that player shifts and, and whatnot. So oh. 
I think the, the biggest thing that we're looking at right now is, is you know, power play and penalty kill, and looking at our specialty teams and just making sure we're sharp here for, for this weekend. Okay. Other quarterfinal matchups on Thursday, Minot against West Fargo Cheyenne, Bismarck Legacy against Fargo Davies, and then Fargo South against Bismarck Century. How do you see the rest of the field? Yeah, you know what? Um, you know, obviously the teams in the East we've seen quite a few times this year. Uh, just sticking with our bracket, West Fargo Cheyenne has had a nice year. You know, they they uh, um, I think just in the last couple of years, their program has taken a huge step forward and, and they've got some nice young players and play the game with speed. And I think we played them the first game of the year. And, and I, I remember leaving that game going, you know what, these guys play fast and physical and, and they they play the game the right way. So they've, they've had a really nice year. Um, you know, and then the other two teams, Fargo Davies is just, uh, again, physical, tough to play against. They've got pretty much all their defensemen back from last year. Uh, they got hard working forward. So, you know, that they're going to come at you and, and, and get in your face. And then Fargo South Shanley, um, you know, they beat us twice this year and, and, uh, um, real good team, good depth up front, good defenseman, you know, one of the top goalies in the state. So they're going to be, they're going to be real good. Uh, you know, don't know much, you know, the teams in the West, we played Bismarck Century right after Christmas and, and, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was eight, one game, but I don't think it was eight, one game. I think they're, I think they're real good. I think they've got some nice players and you know, we had to earn everything we got against them and, and they've got a bright future. I think they only have a few seniors. So, um, Century, Century has some, some nice players and they will be a tough test. And, and then, uh, you know, I know some of the Minot players and, in and, and Morelli and Esslinger and, and some of those Matson and some of those guys, Jackson Bradley and, um, you know, so they've got some real nice players. So it should be, should be a great test. And that's what we want when state tournament time comes around. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the North Dakota State Hockey Tournament at the Ralph Engelson Arena in Grand Forks. I had lived in the area before the Ralph and seeing it for the first time on Monday, I can sum up my reaction in three letters, OMG, and that's <laughs> only seeing the outside and not the inside. I hope the kids realize how lucky they are to play in a facility like that. Yeah, you know what? It is pretty special. I think uh, what a what a great uh, what a great thing for for the state of North Dakota. Not you know the Ralph Engelstead Arena and what that family and you know the Engelstead family has done for for this region is fantastic. You know it, it's a first class facility, the the Taj Mahal of of hockey rinks and and you know one of the nicest rinks, including professional sports in in North America. And so very blessed to have this in in our backyard and in this region. And yeah, these kids, uh, you know, they're they're lucky. And and with that too. What's even great is the fact that we can go back and forth with Fargo every year. That Shields Arena is a great, fantastic arena for for a state hockey event as well. So, so to go back and forth between the Ralph and and Shields and Fargo has been a, has been a great treat for for the the North Dakota hockey community. The North Dakota Boys Hockey Tournament this weekend, uh, hopefully weather permitting, everything gets on on time. Tim Scarper, coach of Grand Forks Red River, thank you so much, and best of luck in the tournament. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate you having me. And we'll continue with the YourLiveEvent.com Coaches Show brought to you by the Hillsborough Economic Development Corporation after this. Hillsborough Economic Development Committee provides information and a support for small businesses. Experience Hillsboro. More at 104. Now for some girls high school basketball, the North Dakota Region 2 playoffs underway. Jason Bren, the coach of the Thompson Tommies, who are in the Region 2 championship game, which we hope will be played on Thursday, weather permitting. And talk about the two wins you had this week, Hillsborough Central Valley on Monday, and then Hatton Northwood on Tuesday. Well, I, I feel like uh, there were two very different games. I think on Monday when we played uh, Hillsborough Central Valley, we were able to uh, play a little faster style. We got up and down the floor a little bit more and uh, – and uh, offensively, we, we we really pounded the ball inside a lot, and, and that's definitely uh, an advantage for us. I think last night against Hatton Northwood, it was uh, a little slower tempo, which is okay, which is fine. And, uh, you know, it, it forced us to do a few things a little differently. They they ran a little more zone. They did man us most of the time, but a little bit of zone here and there. And, uh, you know, we were, we were forced into shooting a little more perimeter shots. So it's probably good right now that we've done uh, a little of both right now because, hey, Tomorrow night, uh, when you play Grafton, you're going to have to both uh, have the balance of inside and outside in order to beat a team like that. The thing about your team is you usually will have three or four players scoring in double figures, and that was the case each of the first two nights, but not always the same four. No, you're absolutely right. And, you know, we've got about seven kids, all of them that have uh, touched double digits this year. And uh, in most games, like you said, we have 
I want to say we have four kids that average right around uh, between 10 and 12 and a half points a game. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's nice balance. And and it's a combination of uh, our backcourt and our frontcourt. I think our guards, you know, they're really good shooters. They also do a great job of getting to the rim and creating for others as well. And uh, and our uh, post players in the paint have really come on here in the last portion of the season. And, you know, their scoring averages are starting to go or rise up, I guess, a little bit more than they maybe were uh, at the midway point. So, you know, anytime you get that balance, it makes you a little bit more difficult team to guard because you can't focus just on one or two kids. You got to worry about everybody that has that ability, you know, to be able to bring a couple of kids off the bench that can score like that as well is definitely something that uh, we're really lucky to have. I'm reminded a bit of the 1969 Minnesota Vikings when Joe Camp was given the team's MVP award. And he said, there ain't no Santa Claus and there ain't no most valuable Viking. I'm not sure that I could pick an MVP from your team. There are so many possibilities, like you say. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't remember 1969, but uh, okay. I, point, I'm, point is well taken. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, we definitely have, uh, you know, like I said, we, we go about seven deep most of the time. Uh, we'll dip in eight if if necessary. But, you know, of those seven, we feel really good about all of them. And, and they all have... Uh, mm-hmm major contributions to our team and they have roles that uh, not only they've accepted, but they just dominate them as best they can. You know, they go into each game knowing kind of what to expect. And, you know, we're just really happy with the way that they've played together this year. You know, I think one thing at the beginning of the year we talked a lot about was decision-making and that was something that, you know, you grow into a little bit, you know, we get a new team and different kids playing some different roles. And as we've grown, I think our decision-making has really come a long ways this year. And, and that really makes them all important. And, and, and I agree. I, I say we've got a lot of MVPs on our team as well. And what's also impressive is that the team is so young. You've got a couple of seniors in Olivia Dick and Clara Stevens, but also Addison Sage and Kaya Hurst as, as freshmen and have stepped in and done and you wouldn't know they were freshmen unless you look at the program. Right, right. Yeah. You know, we're to start off, we're thrilled with our seniors. You know, uh Claire Stevens, Olivia Dick, they're they're fantastic seniors because what they do for our team doesn't always show up on the stat line. I mean, they're just great basketball players, they're great teammates. And and uh, you know, they've almost taken a little bit, I can't say a backseat, but they've taken a step backward as far as um some of their scoring responsibilities this year. You know, they're they're field goal percentages have probably gone up and their assists mm-hmm. have gone up and, and, and every other portion of their stat uh, line has gone up, but maybe they don't have to score as much because of those girls uh, at the freshman level, like you said, that are their scores. I mean, they, they know how to get to the rim. They can shoot, they do a great job. And, you know, a uh, few others, I mean, if you look at uh, Sydney Schwabe, who a lot of times, I mean, I, she's kind of the glue that keeps things going as our point guard out there. And, you know, she gets us set into our, our offensive sets and, Defensively, she she draws some tough uh, challenges as well on the other end. And, and Brenna Martin is really, really coming on here now, too. She's becoming a little bit more of that force that we were hoping she would be. And mm-hmm. you know, it's nice to see kids like that that are able to, uh, you know, kind of take control if they need to. And we're really going to need that because they got big girls in that Grafton team. And that's, that's definitely a concern of ours. And, you know, another kid is uh, Jordan Dozer who comes off the bench for us. You mm-hmm. know, she's, she's no tree top her by any stretch but she has to play big for us because we don't have a lot of those tall girls and you know uh we think with her athleticism you know if you can get that girl going at 100 percent, she's a really great player as well now grafton which is something people have seen before many times in this region championship setting and you played them in grafton in early january and you won that by two talk about that game well it was it was a heck of a game you know uh we hit uh, Addison Sage hit a jumper right on the edge of the paint with about, I forget what it was, maybe six, seven seconds remaining in the game. They gave us mm-hmm. that two point lead. Um, and, and throughout it was a pretty tight game. You know, Grafton's a team that they control tempo and they don't like playing at the same tempo that we play at. So, you know, we expect them like they did the first time to try slow it down on us, whether that be uh, through maybe a three quarter court, you know, just a light press to kind of slow us down or, you know, things like that. But the one thing you can expect from them is is, is a pretty solid and aggressive uh, man-to-man defense. I know they've got some zones that they like to throw in there as well, but, you know, they defend well. They get in the gaps. They take away some of those attack lanes. And, you know, I thought last night uh, one of the things that Mayport did pretty well is they got into those lanes at times. And uh, if you if they're given to you, you have to take them against a team like that because with their size, you know, it, it's a tough team to attack because they'll funnel you into that middle and dare you to shoot it over those six-footers. So, I'd expect a similar type of game. 
And they're like yourselves in that they've got three post players that they'll rotate in. Yeah, they do. And, you know, they're, they're good post players as well. You know, uh, anytime you get kids over six foot, let alone at six feet, and then, uh, you know, a couple others that are just really strong kids. I mean, it, it, it's a lot easier to control the paint when you've got that size advantage. And they've had that size advantage this season against, I would guess, most of their opponents. And, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, we're really going to have to take a strong look at. And we've already started taking a good strong look at um, as, far, as far as game planning for tomorrow's game. And you see uh, LeClaire who of Grafton, who was quiet for three quarters and in the fourth quarter bangs out four threes. Yeah, LeClaire's a heck of a shooter, and we've known that. You know, she she's – kind of been one of those teams I think that have been on Grafton's radar for a while now and it was very unfortunate two summers ago that she uh tore out her ACL at a summer league uh oh. you know in Grand Forks and and uh maybe at this point there may be if there's an advantage it's the fact that last year she wasn't playing but she was able to go to practice and shoot you know and the more mm -hmm. reps you get up the, the more solid you're gonna become of a shooter and more consistent and last night yeah you know uh whether she wasn't getting those shots early on or just passing them up, I'm not 100% certain. But uh, I know that in the fourth quarter, boy, not only was she knocking, but you could just see that confidence level growing and growing within her. Mm -hmm. That should be a great game, as it usually is. Thompson versus Grafton, Region 2 Girls Basketball Championship. Weather permitting on your live event.com. No, we will have it. It's the fingers crossed part about the weather allowing you to have the game scheduled for 730 in Grand Forks on Thursday night. Jason Brennan of the Thompson Tommies, thanks very much, and we'll see you there. All right, thanks, Joe. We'll see you there. And we'll continue with the YourLiveEvent.com Coaches Show, brought to you by the Hillsboro Economic Development Corporation after this. When we think March, we think crop insurance. Hi, this is Bethany Rents, crop insurance agent with IRE Insurance. We will be hosting a March farmer meeting to discuss the 2023 outlook, which will include examples using set spring MPCI prices and share strategies that are geared towards protecting your revenue and preserving your equity. Let us at IRE Insurance be your crop insurance partner. Join us for our meeting in Hillsboro on Thursday, March 2nd at 8 a.m. For location details, please visit our website at IREINS.com. You're protected and appreciated and Irene Insurance is an equal opportunity provider. In Hope, North Dakota, we aren't just a town. We're a community. One that you can be proud of. Where you and your family can grow. With available jobs, affordable housing, a local golf course and pool, the sportsman club, and great educational opportunities, there hasn't been a better time to join the Hope community, ideally located between Fargo, Grand Forks, and Jamestown. For more information, go to www.hopend.com. Live, work, and play in Hope, North Dakota. Buying a new home, but worried about the interest rate and terms from your bank? At First Class Mortgage, we'll find a mortgage that fits your needs. Shopping national banks and other lenders for the lowest rate and most affordable terms. Saving you time and money. So all you need to worry about is enjoying your new home. First Class Mortgage. Our expertise. Your peace of mind. Put an expert to work for you. Call today. Welcome back to the YourLiveEvent.com Coaches Show, brought to you by the Hillsboro Economic Development Corporation. We'll continue talking about girls' high school basketball. YourLiveEvent.com has been following the Region 2 tournament, and we'll continue to do that with third place and championship games on Thursday. We've also been covering the Region 1 girls' basketball tournament from North Dakota. Yesterday, it was Central Cass earning their way to the championship game. And this afternoon, Northern Cass advanced to the Region 1 title game with a victory over Kindred. Joel Morgan had a chance to talk with Central Cass's Claire Cotton and Coach Jay Bachman. But first, we'll go to Chase Miller and his talk after this afternoon's game with D.C. Lucas from Northern Cass. Join us now is D.C. Lucas, head coach for Northern Cass. Uh, D.C., you and I were just chatting a little bit here before this game. You know, give credit to Kendra. They never quit. And, yeah. you know, down by 15, 25 to 10. Uh, they were down at one point in the second quarter, down by 15, 41 to 26 in the second half. And it could be easy uh, on, you know, less than 24 hours on a game removed to kind of say, okay, we, yeah. we might not have enough energy or legs. But uh, you guys had to fend them off and weather the storm. And that was my key to the victory here, D.C., was you guys just weathering the storm here today. Which is going to be key for us come Friday because, you know, a good, a good team like Kendrick, a good team like Central Cast, they're going to make their runs. There's not much you can really do about it. It's how do you weather the storm and then respond. And I was really happy the way we responded on defense especially. Um, we used, obviously, Josie Jensen's length, Ellie's length, just to really help disrupt the shooters and protect the boards. Um, we'll have to clean some things up on offense. I think there were some moments where we just got a little bit uh, 
lethargic and we just need to do a better job passing. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to fix that in one day and get ready for Friday. How about Josie's performance? I, yeah. I mean, when she can get going and, and she gets that fadeaway jumper inside the paint, I don't know anybody that can guard a 6'3 fadeaway here. Yeah, like she's, you know, throughout the year, she's just gotten better and better. It's been incredible to watch. And when she gets in that mode, um, it's just it's just fun to watch, and it just gives us so many options. Obviously, with her, and then obviously having Hallie down low too, and then having some good guards we can kick it out too. So I'm hoping she can keep this uh, uh, this momentum going and just keep disrupting the the middle of the paint. And as much as we can talk about Hallie and Hayden throughout the season, you know, Akela Treader with a big bucket in the fourth quarter. You had Addie Russ with a couple yeah. of threes. You know, Ellie Lucas got a, a number of rebounds and a couple of field goals. I mean. Addie didn't finish with any field goals, but she got a couple of rebounds, yeah. got her hands and some deflections here. A uh, really quality, and this is the definition, I would say, DC, of a team win. Yeah, it's nice to see that. I mean, I, I get it. I mean, Hallie gets a, a ton of uh, press, 32.9, you know, average. But as we've seen the season go on, people have started to see their roles. And, you know, for Addie Russ to come out and hit two big threes in yeah. that first half is huge. It's, it's big momentum. Kayla Treader is, like, owning the offensive rebounding. And then just, we've told uh, Ellie, just concentrate on the boards and she's done it i think she had 10 boards last game and i don't know what she had this game but it just helps us to your point of having three girls in double figures and then there's a smattering of girls in six eight points that's just that's huge for us final thing for you uh barring what mother nature allows you to have or not have in stores it's been the entire talk of uh, the region one girls basketball tournament the last two two years what is the next 48 hours you know truly like as you get to this point on friday hopefully you're on a bus yep hopefully you're making your way at some point in the afternoon to fargo and we yep. can play at you know six and seven thirty for the third place and championship yep. but what's the next 20 24 to 48 hours I like? think you know it's kind of weird as i was at the clock it's only 12 55 so we have the rest of the day to kind of relax a little bit. I think Hallie's going to need an ice bath for a little while, but you know we'll take a step back and I think we'll start breaking down film. And to your point, hopefully we'll have a chance to get to practice on Thursday. Um, you know we we played Central Cast, uh, you know, over a month ago. They look different. We look different. So we'll start to draw up a game plan um, and see what we can do uh, come Friday. Like you said, hopefully we play on Friday. But like I told the girls, we have to adapt to whatever is thrown at us right now. DC, thanks so much for your time. We'll talk to you on Friday night. Sounds good. Thank you. DC. Hillsboro Economic Development Committee provides information and a support for small businesses. Experience Hillsboro. More at 104. And back here on our post-game show, a win for the Squirrels. Claire Cotton with us, 18-point performance. Uh, how's it feel to be back in the championship game in Region 1? It feels so good. Last year, we kind of choked in the semifinals, and it was really disappointing, but we're, we're so happy to be back. I know you guys didn't like the way you started that game yesterday. I know Coach didn't like the way you guys started. How much did you talk about that? How much did you take that to heart? Um. Well, yeah, we just Coach told us we needed a fix, and I think we came out with a lot of fire tonight, and we, we kind of just did all the things that we needed to work on, and yeah, it was good. You had that 14-point quarter. Uh, you were just hitting shots. What was working well for you? Um. Well, I just had to relax a little bit and just get my feet set, and yeah, I would say just relax. Uh, you guys just have this knack to know where each other's going to be. You know where to pass. You know where to make the play. Something else you guys did really well tonight. You made some mistakes. You guys smiled. You guys kind of shrugged it off. Uh, w what is that a testament to how you guys maybe play? Well, like, we know that if we kind of, if we make a mistake and we get all worked up about it, we're going to be tense and we won't, like, we won't know what to do. But if we just kind of, like, relax and just kind of make a joke out of it, we're all like, okay, we're okay. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations again here on this win and uh, moving on to the championship game. Thank you. All right, now sliding on in is uh, Coach Jay Bachman. Coach, you said yesterday, pedal to the floor. I think you guys put the pedal down. I think you put it through the floor. You guys just came out strong. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we had a game plan. We talked about it. You know, today after school, we talked about it in the locker room, and we executed. Uh, uh, we knew what we had to do. Uh, we knew the situations we needed to put them in, and, and we needed to get us into better situations than we did yesterday. And, and, and we, you know, we, we checked all the boxes, really. You guys started the season without DeConte. She had that injury. Weren't sure what really her status might even be for this season. You guys learned to play without her. Uh, maybe a silver line and how much better of a team did that make you? I mean, I think it made people realize that uh, just to step up in different situations, right? Like, we, we know what everyone's capable of doing together, right? What, what are you capable of doing when you have to step up? Um, because, you know, when you have your whole crew and you're – it's – when you have your old crew, you can really kind of come together. When you're missing one, you got to figure out who's filling that hole. Um, so that, that's really what we did, you know. And, and you know, D missed some time late with a little bit of a knee injury too. So, like, even there, we just kind of had to come together. We had to fill those gaps. And I think we did a really good job. And, and tonight, I think we really showed that. Um, I don't have a clue who scored what, but I, I th we had to have at least three or four in double digits. So, um, it, it, you know, it was good. It was good overall. 
Have you ever had a game where you only scored two points in the fourth quarter and still got a win? So uh, I turned, it was like three minutes in, and I turned to my assistant and I said, we haven't scored yet. And our boys played Kindred a couple weeks ago and didn't score in the fourth, and they still won. And I said, I, you know, begrudgingly said, we, I said, we need to score. And we scored two, and she said, we got our two. So I, it is what it is, we, you know, I wanted all those girls to get minutes, right? I wanted everyone to get a play and I wanted everyone to have, you know, get in there, have a little fun. And, um, cause this is a big, like playing on this court is fun, right? Play, doesn't matter who you are for what time or how long playing here is different. So getting those freshmen, getting those girls who haven't played here, those three, four minutes at the end is awesome. Right. And, and it's not like they, you know, it's not like we gave up 20, right? Like we, we only scored two, but I mean, what we give up seven, eight, like it's water under the bridge. Uh, the weather forecast, I think, is anywhere between a half an inch to 58 inches of snow here the next couple of days. Plans tomorrow for the other semi at 1130, back to Friday as originally scheduled. But quite honestly, we don't know that. I mean, how do you take the next couple of days here in stride? So, I mean, I hope we have school. We will be, have practice, right? You know, practice, 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 practice. Um, I think that's where we've gotten better, like, all season is our practices are tough. Like, we're beating up on, excuse me, we're beating up on each other, right? And uh, that's what we do in practice. Now we're not going to beat up on each other tomorrow, but you know, we're going to practice tomorrow. We're going to practice Thursday and we're going to come ready Friday. I mean, we, we've been saying like job's not done every game. Season's not over. Job's not done. This is no different. Season's not over. Job's not done. So. All right, coach. Congratulations on a trip back to the championship game. Thank you very much. And that's going to do it for this edition of the your live event.com coaches show brought to you by the Hillsborough economic development corporation. We had hoped to have central cast girls wrestling coach, Travis Lamar with us, along with the Squirrels' Anna White, who was the state champion at 100 pounds, and Katie Sinner, who was also the state champ at 250. And the Squirrels, as a team, finished second in the girls' wrestling meet. Unfortunately, the weather has kind of gotten in the way there, and we hope to talk with all those folks next week on the YearLiveEvent.com Coaches Show. We'll also talk to teams that are going to the girls' state high school basketball tournament in North Dakota. The Minnesota high school basketball playoffs will be getting underway. We'll have previews of those games as well. And whatever else is going on in the world of high school sports around the region, we'll have it for you right here on yourliveevent.com Wednesday night at 7. I'm Joe Lancello. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you again soon.